Hey, so everyone goes to college to make friends, um, get qualifications, like, but um, what are like the good stuff? Like, of course, there's going to be good stuff about college, like, for instance, making friends again, learning new different things that you haven't and getting yourself to do more instead of staying home all the time but have you ever wonder can college sometimes be a bad thing to the point when it's making teenagers unhappy sad or even depressed sounds strange doesn't it well there are, there are also bad things about college there is and hopefully we're going to talk about most of them today but just to let you know if we don't cover all of it today wait until this month when something like this will come out again but with lots of acting as a short film on this channel once again here is the intro the college and the world part one Now I just want to first say this is not a attack on colleges of me trying to be mean and try to expose them throughout this doc. No, it's just trying to make colleges think a bit more about certain subjects that may make sense by the end of this um, doc, which will go about some things. Some of the things will be talked. I will talk from facts and research and some of it will be talked from the mind from myself it will be sometimes I feel like if you talk from the mind it's best than having a look for research I have done some facts videos before on education from math school and college and I'm planning to do more of them I will put them down in the link in the description so let's move on to the actual thing I just want to make that clear all right Oh, and I'm a 16 year old to swim major. Oh, uh, what is college? First, my reading will be terrible throughout the stock, so I am sorry if that does annoy you. <laughs> anyway, um, I look so amazing right now. Um, what is a college? Well, I'm gonna put the pitch work. I will be and for all of them as well so you can have a read as well and I'm so sorry and I am deeply sorry if you can't see the picture okay um okay what is college well a noun uh one an educational so it's like that it is, and I'm not going to bother reading something if I can't. So, um, so that's what it definitely means, but what does it mean to most young people around the world? Well, a college is somewhere where you learn, develop s skills to go on to work and to get a job. Um, for instance, if you're getting a job in, uh, in the catering, where you're making food and, rest and working in a restaurant, um, you're going to need to learn how to cook a bit more because of course you can do it in school and nursery at home but then also you can do it again at college and you're able to learn into the more detailed things about catering you can go in a bit in depth you can it's really planning what college you go to or if you want to do stuff for media sort of getting in the film business then well 
of course you're gonna if you want to be like a actor let's say you're gonna have to learn how to act and learn how to read lines you are from paper and if you're a writer you're gonna have to learn how to write which I already know how to come on you wouldn't be getting all of this if I didn't know how to write but um it's that it's those certain things that you need but if you want to be a youtuber and work on your own and your and then basically your your own um you're your own boss let's say and you don't need anyone else you don't. Of course things you learn from school and college will help you in this but really you're kind of on your own unless if you want to go out because you're mainly doing all the work and that's what I tell myself because yeah all of this comes from my 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 at least this is like my second YouTube name is not real at all but yeah so that's what college probably means to teenagers. So colleges you have to go there and the reason why they're here is because after you leave school I don't know if this applies to everyone in different countries but in the UK after when you leave school you go to college at the age of 16 or you can go at 15 the youngest age that you can go to college will be um, I've been told the uh, 14 and then you can leave about when you're like 23 and then after college is university but that's your choice and then but if you don't want to do that and then you're basically free to either get a job or decide what you're going to do because when you leave college that means you're an adult um, and that's the law because you have to stay in uh, education until you're 18 and you're going to bye bye so that's what it's here for, that's why we have it. Um, colleges are different to schools because they won't focus on big topics. Like, for instance, if you want to do computing, most colleges won't have that, and you're going to have to develop throughout the years to do that. Whether if you want to do like English or maths, then you can do it because you have to do it until you get the good grades to do it until you get those qualifications and until you don't until they teach you it to the point where you basically don't need it no more that it's kind of like that because there's some things you will need in life and there's some things that you won't need in life maths english reading communication and maybe a bit of science you will need in life but um Yes, I can tell you one thing you'll need in life, and that's sex, sex education. The actual talk, because if you don't know how to do it, then I think have the talk or get someone to teach you it before it actually happens, depending what gender. Anyway, so that's why colleges are here. Now, are the teachers good at it? Are your TAs or LSAs good at it? LSA stands for Learning Support Assistant and TA stands for Teaching Assistant. It does. Um, are they good? Are the lessons good? Well, hopefully we can talk about that. And I'm going to end with something that can go down on a bit of a post. So, yeah, from the site. Now, before we get into like, the dark side of things, um, <clears throat> whilst talking about college, we're going to have a look from positive stuff, but this is from the mind as well. From, so, from okay, so so the good things from college, as most young people would agree, is that of course you get to learn, you get to make friends, and you get to hopefully one day get qualifications. And for some students, that excites them to the point where. Oh, I'm nearly there. Hopefully I'll get what I want. Because most people in this world want money. They do. And I think that's how one of the reasons why it will excite them. It will, let's say. Because, um, I guess, as the years go by, as being a teenager and you're still in college, you kind of get a bit fed up with college and you want to get on to moving a job and get money and just learn and then just have a happy life 
that's all I can really think of. But now we're going to get into the negative side of, of things. So, yeah. So, how do these colleges fail, let's say, starting off with this point? Um, well, from the point of mind, they do poorly ratings, the teaching is bad, how they look after their students is not very good, and that's how it could mainly be. It could. Um, or too many stuff has happened to the point where they have to go. All abusive stuff happens. Like you've seen those videos of teachers fighting students online, which is abuse. It is. And a teacher like that would go to jail for it for a very long time. Or prison, whatever they call it. So. Now, how do these college actually get shut down rather than fail? Because when I wrote that, while I wrote how do colleges fail, nothing really much actually came up. Well, someone's going to expose me for that, but anyway. I'm going to put a chart up here of college closings between 1990 to 2014, so it's not really updated. This is the only good one I could really find, but... The highest one of college closings has been in two of the years between well you can see it but the last one that was not so good was back in it looks like 2008 to 2010. So that's, and since then, everything's been away. There's only been one year where no college closings have been. And to see that, it was only not that long ago, so I'd say seven or eight years until since that happened, I would say that's an improvement, but nothing's been updated, so you never know what, what's happened since then. So you're talking the years of 2000, well, let's say 2015, 16, and now. So I'm going to read this out for you, and this might bring in an explanation of how do these colleges get shut down. Most of the schools, I'll put it up, sorry. Most of the schools, inclu in including introduce here whatever here are private non-profit four year colleges through a handful are public four year colleges the chart does not in include major between two or more colleges just colleges that have closed while there well, while there didn't appear to be a so weirdly, hopefully you've read that, but hope um it looks like. I can't really, I don't really know if actually, if that gives you a clear explanation, but have a think about it. Like, I'm going to give you one question. Does the teachers or the environment have anything to do with these college closings? And how bad can it get? So seriously, how bad can it get? I don't what like one education schools and colleges that they have to shut because of things that happened because how the school works is through money through teaching through keeping it all alive and without that it's just nothing is most countries, not a lot, but most countries don't have education. So that means kids and teens like us don't have any education. 
Now, under 18s, you will understand me. What is the first thing that comes to you when I say this, and parents have definitely said this to you and teachers, you are so lucky to have education because in other places they do not. What comes to your mind? Do you get annoyed when you say that, when they say that? Do you say I don't care? Or I don't want to have educa education because part of the answer that you may say that I'm not blaming you, I think you're right, um, is because maybe because of how your day goes at school so you may get bullied or things may happen that, it, that might stress you and I suggest talking to someone so tell me what is, the first, what is your first thought that comes to you when I just said that or like just type a word from your first thought just get me to understand of how you are now we've talked about the size of the college we have, of how it might fail, which is disappointing. But does it have also anything to do with the teenagers? And I would say yes, because the emotions that they have, at, well for once I'm going to say this, if everyone's been a teenager in their life, everyone's been like 10 years old, 12 years old, everyone has been in their child law and then came out of it. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's easy, but we're going to, like, some emotions that teens have, and then I'm going to explain how it could happen, or why it happens. Okay, stress, a common one for everyone. In a college environment, I'm not going to, like, um... I'm going to say for an example, give me a second. This here is a camera. It is. Bing bing. You may not see it. And. Oh, I and this is the college that I go to. Teachers tell you to not say where you go. But this college is so big that literally anyone could get in there. Now, why am I saying that? Well, for example, your stress. In a college like that, for instance, if you're in mainstream, you're 16, you are just left school but we're not talking about special needs here we're talking about a main, mainstream school and you gone to college and you find out that it's more stressful than you thought or it's less stressful it could be to do with your homework to do with the teachers how they act or maybe there are too many students in there that's one of the ways that stress can be built and I suggest talking to someone about it or maybe getting changed colleges or put in a special needs area. Now how could one of the things of child abuse happen? Child abuse first is for the child age, a minor age and including of a teenager age as well. Because how could that happen? Well, in a college environment, a child, a child, child abuse where it happens between a child and an adult. So, in that environment, I would say, not just to do with words, it can do, do with these fists, but also words. And that's bad, and that could be one of the reasons why most colleges will get shut down, or get warnings, or get the, the police involved. Or the law. Now, is this good to have child abuse in this type of area? No. Because sometimes in colleges you do have actual children in there, either visiting with family or you have actually you 
or you have 14 or 15 year olds there. And I suggest, to be honest, don't have it there. Um, if you're getting affected by this, then I want to talk to someone. Try and change it, try and make sure it does not happen. I'm going to say one more. Ah, depression. Many people have it, some people don't like to admit it. Or for instance, many people will have it and then when they say something about it, most people don't really care. Or a person may say, stop it, you're not depressed. Well, the thing is, I wouldn't advise watching those Prince EA videos. Those are the videos Depending how you are, depending how a person you are, it won't make you happy. It doesn't make me feel happy, but it may not make others feel happy. Now, what do I mean by this? Depression can happen when a student is not getting a lot of attention, when there is too much happiness, yes. When there's sometimes too much happiness, it can lead to sadness, it can. That's what I've had in my life as well. Or depression could to do with homework, to do with the most popular things that get talked about, but I want to focus on the stuff that doesn't get talked about. So, can this be stopped? It can by making sure this teen, this student is feeling happy. Even if you're in your 20s and you're getting depressed and if a teacher notices, to the teachers, to anyone that's watching this, because to be honest, I can't believe teachers watch YouTube videos. I suggest talking to your student if you, if they show signs of depression, or you know they're depressed, because any everyone, no matter what their age, will need a helping hand in life. So these type of feelings, including many more like eating disorders, eating disorders, bullying. Cyber addiction or cyber bullying, teen pregnancy, the stuff that can happen in college. And if you want to stop them, the teens have to do a little bit about it, but you as the teacher has to do something about it. And if you're the parent and if you haven't done anything about this and you you talk about this with with your son or daughter, just try and do something about it. Try and just make sure that, that it's okay, it is this funny time, this weird time in your life where you're transferring from a school that you were a child from, you still am if you're under 18, to now your college and depending how you feel, sometimes you may feel I want to get a job, sometimes you may feel you don't want to get a job. It's a weird time. But don't just talk to them about that, talk to them about their feelings and try and help them. Try and seek them therapy or try and do something. Or in lessons, sometimes having a one to one is good because then you get to know people more. I wanted a one to one in my college, but it took too long it did and I just gave up. I get happy at college, I do, but too much happiness I find out is not so good. Um, I like it, but whatever. So try and make these feelings stop because a person like me couldn't really, but there are other people there that can that can help. So yeah. Why do I do this and no one's gonna watch this? Well, this next part may be long, but I want you to listen up. I read this, there was this post on are teens being pressured to go to college and the answer is yes. I'm going to read you this and if I can't read a word then I'm afraid that I'm going to have to skip that. I will. I will try and put up the picture some but I will also put the link in the description to everything that I've just said. Not that many, but I'll put a link to child in the description anyway. Okay. Yes. 
teens and teens are under a extreme pressure to join colleges. Reason being, everyone accepts them to perform very well in this line. This this line which may be not the case for some. Everyone has different abilities and when under pressure to develop, especially in school, the feeling can be frustrating. Parents want the best for their children and so do the teachers and the, and the social ad. And this, I can't, uh, sociality in general. Many a brain joining the top colleges, followed by a luxury job in in this competitive economy to meet these. something teens must perform extremely well in school the parents will put extreme extreme whatever extreme pressure on them to earn good grades no matter no matter the cost to add on this the teen has more than enough to juggle the daily basics including Activities, loads of homework, and a social life to cover, all in the name of getting good grades. Study shows that intrigues, pressure, made back final assault, and, and the result is social, phys physical, and emotional stress. So in a way, that's kind of like saying that in that post, it's really saying that teens are being pressured and I, I honestly don't think, I don't want to be negative in this point, but I want, in life I want there to be something to do about this. For once, parents need to stop wishing on good grades. Stop wishing on anything else. Just wish that they are happy and being positive. Because if you're not doing that, then I think you're a bad parent you are. And the thing is, everyone has feelings. And does just think about it. That in life, you will want them. And if you're getting pressurised to do something that you don't want to do, then that's not the real you. If you want to do something, do it. If you don't want to go join and do this YouTube, then do it. It's just one thing that parents want you to do is just feel happy and feel safe. Don't feel sad and depressed. But I know that parents can develop on that. And when they say that, oh, do this and do that, do this and do that, from college and homework, it can make it more bad. The, feeling can, the feelings can develop. 
So my advice to parents is just wish to them to be happy and be calm and collective and no life's hard but at the end of the day they're your son, they're your daughter, that's what you wanted at the start because many parents were developing stress to the point of abusing the child and then they get taken away and then you make their lives hell and they, depending on how they feel, they will never accept you ever again. So, and for teachers, don't say to them, don't say to the students, this is not, this is, most people will find that this is not motivating words, that hopefully, sorry, um, hopefully one day you'll be able to get into a job and have a good enough ed education. Words like that, for most people, it's not it's educational. It's not most motivating. There are other ways to do that. There are. And I hope that you will learn in time. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Part two will be coming up in the next couple of months. Until then, be kind to one another. With no stay March 24th.